So I normally shy away from product reviews like this because there are a ton of handheld devices that are on the market right now, but this one definitely got me interested. And today we are going to take a look at the IO Neo Air handheld. Now what's special about this handheld is that it features a Ryzen 5 5560U with 16 gigabytes of onboard RAM, 512 gigabytes of storage, a small form factor that runs at Windows 11, and perhaps the star of the show is the OLED display at resolutions up to 1080p. Now the product itself is only 18 millimeters thin, and compared to the Steam Deck, it's much lighter and much more compact. The best comparison is that of the Nintendo Switch Lite. But moving on, the iNeo Air will cost you $500, and for me, this really puts it right up there as a competitor to the Steam Deck, which has already captured a healthy market share in the x86 handheld space. But is the iNeo Air really worth the money? Well, let's go ahead and find out. And before we jump in, big thank you to iNeo for sending out this product for me to take a look at on the channel. First up, the packaging. Now I know some of you might be interested in this. The box comes with the unit itself, a USB-C power adapter with separate adapters that you can use in different countries, and a few USB adapters to Type-C. But of course, the star of the show is the Air itself, and it looks pretty sexy in white, I gotta say. The initial feel of the device is very good. It's built well, not too heavy, the D-pad and face buttons do feel great, although I will say that the face buttons could be a little larger, but this is a small nitpick. The analog sticks do feel really good, and Ioneo proudly claim that these sticks will never suffer from drift. Of course, that does remain to be seen, but that is a very positive statement. Now, the shoulder triggers feel really good as well, with a nice bounce and overall texture. The shoulder buttons for me are the weakest part. They do feel a little awkward on my fingers, and while they work fine, perhaps they could be a little larger. The unit also comes with two separate USB Type-C ports. Either one can be used to charge the device, and of course can be plugged into a USB hub to access external displays, mouse and keyboards, and things like that. This is a Windows 11 device after all, and I will say that to set this device up, especially if you want to set up things like emulators and ROMs on it, it will be very tedious. So invest in a USB hub and plug in a mouse and keyboard combo, and things will definitely go a lot smoother. There's also an SD card slot at the bottom for extra storage, and as mentioned, this model has 512 gigabytes of onboard storage, which in of itself is pretty good. I also want to talk about the OLED display. It pops rather nicely. As you can see on camera here, it looks exceptional. Now, I will say it's probably not as vibrant as the Switch OLED, but it's not far off. It's certainly a lot better than the PlayStation Vita OLED display, and this is definitely one of the big selling points of the IO Neo Air. You're getting a small form factor handheld with an OLED display that runs x86 and emulators and games on Steam. It's a pretty compelling device, at least on paper. Now the main focus of this product in this video will be emulation, as that's what I'm mostly interested in and that's why you're here to watch this episode. But let's get a few things out of the way first. This is not a high-end product and you should temper expectations a little when it comes to running games. Yes, you can access your Steam library, and things usually run pretty well, for the most part, but I will say that in general, games will run slower on the air as compared to the Steam Deck in my experience, and this is simply down to a difference in specifications. The Steam Deck has an advantage in gaming due to its RDNA2 architecture. The iNeo's Air CPU has two more cores than the Steam Deck at six physical and 12 hardware threads, but its architecture is Zen 3 and Vega based with a 2.3 GHz base and a 4 GHz boost. This doesn't mean the Air is a slouch, however, but in general, most things won't run as well as on the Steam Deck. The battery in the iNeo Air is at a moderate 28 watt hours. There is an operating system feature to adjust the amount of TDP from the Air out to 12 watts. The maximum you can push the device is to 15 watts TDP. This, of course, comes at the cost of heat and battery life. Ioneo suggests to keep the system between 5 to 10 for most indie games. For example, I tested Hades at 8 watts TDP, and I could manage around 1 hour and 45 minutes of battery life. Turning that power up to 12 watts TDP gave me just over 1 hour of battery life. So for more demanding emulators such as the Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, you absolutely want the maximum amount of TDP from the device. But keep in mind, you'll only get about one hour of battery life. 
for 8, 16-bit and some 32-bit emulation, dropping the power down to 8 or even lower will work fine, and you'll get a lot more battery life out of this. But the bottom line is, when you're at full tilt, you'll be getting one hour of battery life from the unit before you need to plug the charger in. Fan noise at this level, as you would expect, also gets quite high. Now with that said, let's jump in and test some emulators. First of all, Xbox 360 testing is a bit of a mixed bag. We're here running at 720p for this one, at 12 watts TDP. Games like Red Dead Redemption really struggle to run here, as you would expect. We can see the frame rates are simply not there for the hardware. But on the flip side, smaller XBLA style games run quite well. For example, I ran GoldenEye XBLA on the system for a few levels and overall it was a great experience, sitting between 35 to 45 FPS on average during gameplay. This is a pretty good way to have GoldenEye running on a handheld. Overall, Xbox 360 I would say though is too demanding for the hardware at this time, but of course things could change going forward. Original Xbox runs quite well and in some cases better than the Steam Deck. Running once again at 720p with a 12 watt TDP, Jet Set Radio Future runs close to 60fps, but it's certainly not locked at this resolution. Conker's Bad Fur Day runs better here on the IO Neo than it does on the Steam Deck, and in general, games like Rally Sport Challenge 2, a quite demanding original Xbox title for the most part, ran quite well. Next up, I tested PlayStation 3 emulation with RCPS3, again at 720p with a 12 watt TDP, with the latest stable version, and in general, things ran pretty well. Demon's Souls with its 60 FPS patch runs great inside corridors, but once you move out to the larger outdoor areas, the frame rate does take a dip, so it might be better just playing at the stock 30 FPS cap. Ridge Racer 7 tested quite well, with a solid overall feel, and I also tested Afterburner Climax, and it didn't budge from its 60 FPS lock. But of course, I will say when it comes to PS3, everything is not going to run well. The RC PS3 emulator is very demanding, as you know, and I tried Metal Gear Solid 4, and overall the performance wasn't great. Not the fault of the hardware, of course, it's just that it demands a much more powerful desktop processor. Where the system really does shine, however, is when we go back and emulate the GameCube, PlayStation 2, and Dreamcast era of games. With the OLED display, games that run on Dolphin look and run like an absolute dream on this handheld, as does the latest PC SX2 PlayStation 2 emulator, as well as Dreamcast emulation using ReDream. All these ran near flawlessly at 60 FPS for the most part. There are some games on the GameCube, of course, that runs under Dolphin. For example, F-Zero GX is one game that does have a history of running quite slow on lesser devices. But overall, I would say GameCube, PlayStation 2 and Dreamcast is really the sweet spot when it comes to this handheld. So in conclusion, what is my overall impression of the IO Neo Air? Well, I think it's a solid device and a pretty good handheld. Let's be clear, however, this is a system that is weaker than the Steam Deck, which is the more powerful product. But at the end of the day, I think those of you who might be interested in the Air are looking for a smaller form factor, a handheld that you can easily fit in your pocket. And with that amazing looking OLED display, it's really the icing on the cake. The Air model is priced at $500, and that is not cheap, but you do get a ton of value for money here. If you go into this purchase knowing that this device will handle indie games extremely well and some AAA games at low settings and offer a above average emulation experience, then you'll be more than satisfied with this device. The battery life does leave a little to be desired, with only about one hour at max power draw, and that may turn some people off. I gotta be honest, as I was testing the air over the weekend, I had to recharge the battery numerous times and it does get a little tedious. But at the end of the day, this device does exactly what it's advertised to do and it does it extremely well. I think as an emulation device, it's probably the best handheld that you can get. And it's all thanks to that OLED screen. And I can absolutely recommend it if you are looking for a device to run that level of emulation. 
But for those of you who are waiting for a quote Steam Deck killer to come along and offer better performance, then you may want to look elsewhere. But overall, I'm very happy with this device. And once again, I did want to thank Ioneo for sending it out for me for review. If you guys have any further questions about what you saw in this episode or anything else, let me know in the comments below. But that will do it for this episode for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye for now.